What is up guys, Rekas here with a new video and today we are going to check out SL30.4 Abyss. Um, the last battle actually of SL30 Abyss, a uh, pretty difficult fight I have to say. We tried to clear it on stream, only got to SL30.3 but I uh, was dedicated to do it so I spent quite some time later on clearing it and was able to get this fight to get uh, the success finally. And there are quite a few tricks in that team, uh, in that team quite a few small nuances, uh, small improvements that I made and that finally led to this fight, this active that actually killed the boss and one throne draw minion and barely surviving with SQH here. And yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure it was possible to do it with SQH, um, but I was able to and was quite happy to do it. So just looking at the damage numbers here, um, actually 260 billion um, it was 250 billion life is about what the enemies have everything else is overkill actually um, it's 50 billion per enemy there are five enemies including the boss um, so quite difficult but we could do it and i'm definitely more than happy to show you this setup so uh, this is actually it i just thought i might do a preset and um, put all the heroes in there so you can maybe even make a screenshot uh, if you want to copy the setup so you have like all the details already um the most important thing is to have a really strong sqh um sqh was a minus her stats um, her awakening bonus stats were giant killer um block and damage reduction so pretty defensive copy apart from the uh, giant killer giant killer is of course kind of a key but you might be able to clear lower stages of the same as l with like a b tier sqh or something similar um i'm quite sure you wouldn't need the a minus ignis i'm quite sure a good b tier or b plus tier ignis with damage reduction or um, armor probably at best damage reduction would work as well and um would even do quite well. We will take a look at those two heroes uh, later on. Right now I want to explain the setup a little bit more. Um, you don't need any gear or artifact on the first Ignis. It's not required. The front row heroes, um, the front row suicide Ignis will die turn one on the first attack from the enemy. Um, the back row Ignis won't. The back row Ignis will live till turn two and uh, so will the crews in the back row. Um, the reason for that is that all the basic attacks from the enemies either target the front row or the enemy with the highest crit, which is our SQH in that case. Um, I put a Punisher staff on the uh, wall deck because I thought like um, maybe they target the second highest crit sometimes, uh, which they don't. Um, but it turned out that not having a damage reduce artifact um, led to some pretty good timing on his death and made him basically die pretty early on on turn two which is exactly what you want you don't want him to die on turn one as this will lead to your sqh and ignis most likely not having enough time to get um, the last active ready and actually get the kill on the enemies um, you want him to die on turn two but also not late on turn two which was the case when i used the crown you want him to die early on on turn two that is perfect and um, that is like the case with a lot of things in this SL like a lot of things ha have to happen with a certain timing um, you have to get an energy feed at some point at one point and then um, have to do an active and the next um, active has to come at the right timing and you kind of have to balance the team out a little bit so um, that's why the wall deck death on the beginning of turn two is important and is achieved by basically using him um, with some ranger gear some artifact um, that doesn't have damage reduce um it was an attack hp stone and um unbending will and that will work out just fine um we just need the wall deck for his um death passive this death passive basically um gives us a buff that makes it possible for us to get a, a healed whenever a blood enemy attacks or ignis or our sqh and this is basically our main defense line gives the heroes like an eloise kind of feel whereas where they heal after every enemy attack and um, this is the only real thing that keeps us alive to be honest um, the heals from ignis and sqh are fine and nice here yeah, and definitely needed of course um, but the 
second and third round are basically carried by that buff from wall deck. Um, beyond that, wall deck gives us quite a huge uh, attack buff. Every time a blood enemy attacks us, we also get an attack buff. Um, and having this huge attack buff stacking up um, definitely makes it possible for us to get those really huge actives. And this is further enabled by another thing. Um, as I said, the Ignis in the back row only dies in turn 2, and you can see that in the video. Um, this actually sometimes um, makes it possible that the boss taunts the SQH, which might seem bad, but it turns out it really isn't. Um, it was one of the weirder aspects I noticed, and it took me some time to notice it. Uh, I accidentally happened that I um, had the Ignis no longer die on turn 1, but on turn 2, and um, I noticed that when the SQH is actually taunted by the boss, she will only attack the boss. And this means she will not attack the other enemies, and um, especially the priest enemies, actually debuff SQH when she attacks them. And most of her kids will attack them, so she gains a lot of debuffs. And getting taunted by the boss and wasting, seemingly wasting, one active skill on the boss actually clears off all her debuffs. And the next active, after that round where she's actually taunted, uh, that active will actually hit very hard, very very hard, and you can see that in the video you have all the buffs from wall deck, from the wall deck um, buff uh, with the attack, and you have no debuffs on you, so the next um, active can basically uh, take half the life of the stage away. Um, beyond that, it's really a stat game. It's really a stat game. Um, maybe I have to say something about the cruise first. Um, the cruise was like a little bit weird. Um, it's certainly a very good hero, and it would be even better if you had him at like E5. I don't have him at E5, but he um, was, in my opinion, more useful than the Destroyer would have been. Um, what he does is basically he inflicts a weakness mark on the enemies, and that weakness mark can be purified, um, but as long as it is not purified, it actually gives you an extra 50% of damage. And that extra 50% of damage uh, can be quite substantial, and I have seen fights um, where the enemy didn't purify um, that weakness mark for the entire three-round duration it has, and um, in that cases it really helped to uh, enable the damage um, against those enemies and really um, made some faster clears of some enemies possible, and you might run into a situation where you get like that extra little bit of damage or like a pretty huge uh, um, active and huge round where those enemies don't um, purify that mark and you can actually deal all the damage in the world um, with the help of that little cruise and you can use him at five star because as I explained um, turn one the enemies only attack front row and highest crit so he's very much safe in the back row and uh, just needs an energy artifact and you can actually have a five star survive on that SL which is super weird and something that you uh, wouldn't expect to happen but those heroes are safe. And uh, what was one of the weirdest discoveries, and I didn't initially realize it in my first video when I looked at um, these uh, data mine by GWO, and um, it was something that I didn't notice, but it's certainly the case. Uh, beyond that, and we already talked about that, we need attribute reduction purify. We have an attack and a crit um, attribute reduction, and that's definitely needs to be purified, otherwise we won't be able to deal any damage. Um, so that's definitely necessary to have the attribute deduction purified. Other than that, um, I enhance the stone. Uh, we actually have a crit, crit damage attack as five stone. And we can take a look at that one second. So this is the actual SQH that we used in the fight against the SL with all the right stats and all the stats um, that we actually used. We had 412 million HP and an attack of 7.9 million, which isn't too much compared to other clears I've done. And um, one major reason for that was that I didn't have a proper slot 1 tenant for the um, SQH. Um, I used a B-tier queen with like no imprints because she can't have imprints at this point. This will change in the near future um, and you will be able to use imprints on her which will make her the best tenant for that slot. Um, I could have used the Suicide Ignis but I didn't really have the dust to make it work and um, I didn't want to upgrade her um, because I didn't want to hinder her from dying early on. Uh, it would certainly have been possible to use a flag on the frontline Ignis that is possible and something you can do um, because you will pretty much 
die anyway. There's like 120 million uh, attack coming in. It's pretty, pretty certain that she uh, is dead in that way. So you can use one of these suicide ignis as tenant as well. Uh, in that case, um, only if she's leveled up, of course. Uh, but having like a very bad tenant in one slot takes away a lot of stats that uh, much you can believe. Um, but it was was possible. So let's look at the other uh, stuff. We have like full sublimations, as I said. Uh, block damage reduction, giant killer. Pretty mediocre um, copy, to be honest. Um, of course, an A minus, but like not very high attack, not very high HP. Nothing too special, to be honest. Um, skill set we have a two star soul resonance gear. Actually upgraded that and helped a little bit. Some extra crit, some extra stats, extra all damage dealt. Um, would recommend using two star uh, resonance gear. And of course the S5 soul stone crit, crit damage attack. And this was one of the hugest or uh, biggest change, uh, changes I've done because having the crit, crit damage attack stone um, really helped the damage. And this was something that I already said on stream that it might be good, but I was like at the point where I where I was a little bit annoyed by the fact that I couldn't clear it. So I said like, okay, you do three rolls and if you get it, it's fine. And I got it on the second roll. And so I upgraded it to S5 and um, it really changed a lot. That's absolutely the best stone for this SL. Um, you of course need the speed to outspeed the enemies. That is also very important. The best artifact you can use is melodic strings. Tested basically all the others. <laughs> melodic strings was by far the best. Um, those are the best enables. You will need the heal from balance strike. This is definitely necessary and definitely uh, pretty much the only way to survive it. Uh, beyond that, of course, you deal an extra 15% uh, of damage, uh, an extra 30% of damage, sorry, uh, if you don't crit and you will not crit quite often, even though you have to. Um, the Void Imprints, DR, we need the survivability and crit chance, crit damage, as I said, all about the crit. Um, full tree with level 100. Uh, 100. Um, I would recommend that you don't get this noble sublimation for the basic attack. This one is pretty bad. Um, the reason for that is that your basic attack will target four random enemies and this will actually make it more likely that you hit both of those priest enemies and hitting both of those priest enemies will give you more debuffs. So. Having this noble sublimation will actually work against you. You can skill everything else um, and you should skill everything if you can because all of those things are really helpful apart from that single noble sublimation that's actually horrible. Um, Abyssal Corruption stacks are, uh, are something that we can talk about for a second. Um, Abyssal Corruption stacks makes the enemy deal less crit damage and take more crit damage, so it enhances our damage. And it is some part of the RNG to get that double layer of Abyssal Corruption, so you can deal actually deal more damage. Um, so those are the stats for the SQH. Let's look at the Ignis. Ignis, um, 275 million HP, attack doesn't matter. And the copy was actually pretty good. Crit damage, holy armor, divine lock. But as I said, you will be pretty fine with a B or B plus um, Ignis with a good HP stat and good bonus stats. That is very important. Uh, definitely want the R or block or something. Uh, defensive stats, as defensive as possible. A uh, gotcha would probably be something like the R block. The R block or the R armor would probably be optimal. So with that being said, guys, um, I'm pretty happy I could clear that SL. Um, we are now four SLs in cleared um, SL Abyss and on the other side actually cleared all three. So Dark, Forest and Fortress. Uh, only Light and Shadow remain. And I think the next one that we are going to do will be Light, still at SL25 here. And I hope I can get a clear here. I'm not sure. Maybe we will do it with just B tiers or we will go uh, and I might get an A EOS. Is some is a hero that I kind of want to have. <laughs> but we will see about that. In any way, guys, I wish you a great day and we'll see us in the next one.